We're learning the Sicha of Parsha Shmois Tovshinun Beis. The Sicha can be found in Sefer HaSichas Tovshinun Beis, Chelek Aleph, page 244. On the Pasuk Veil Shmois Bnei Yisroel Haboy Mitzrayim, these are the names of the Bnei Yisroel that came to Mitzrayim. The Medrash tells us that the Shvatim are called and named over here Al Shem Geula Yisroel. They are so called because of the Geula. As the Medrash goes on to explain that each one of the names of the Bnei Yisroel, of the sons of Yisroel, that is the twelve Shvatim, how each one of them is connected to the Geula, and therefore the fact that they're being mentioned right over here is mainly a reference to the Geula. So the Rebbe says we need to understand. Simply in the words Haboy Mitzrayim, we're speaking about the Yidin coming down into Mitzrayim, into Golos Mitzrayim, as the Psukim and the Parshias that follow indicate, and this is what the discussion is, it is only after a very long time that we finally have the Geula out of Mitzrayim, as is related not in this Parsha, not even in next week's Parsha, Parsha's Bo'era, rather this only starts in the following Parsha, in the middle of Parsha's Boy. If that's the case, how could we say, how could the Medrash say that the Bnei Yisroel mentioned right in the beginning of Parsha's Shmois is al shem Geulas Yisroel, the reason they're being mentioned right over here is because of the Geula, which seems to be the exact opposite of the words Haboy Mitzrayimo, which is being discussed right over here, which is mainly a reference to the coming into Golos. In another Medrash, it says something that's sli- a bit similar, but here we could understand why the Medrash says that a little better. In that particular Medrash it says, the Geula of Mitzrayim was because the Yidin did not change their names. One of the schusim for which the Yidin came out of Mitzrayim was the schus that they did not change their names. The Medrash says, Reuven v'shimoyin nachsin, Reuven and Shimoin went down into Golos, as it says over here, Eilu Shmois b'nei Yisroel, and it mentions the names, and Reuven and Shimoin came up out of Golos, meaning they kept their Jewish names. Based on this Medrash, we would be able to say, that the meaning of the Eilish Moiz B'nei Yisroel Haboy Mitzrayimo is emphasizing the schus for which the Yidin were taken out of Mitzrayim, that they did not change their names. And that would not be a contradiction, that would not be a problem with the simple words of Haboy Mitzrayimo, the fact that they're coming down into Golos, because there's a remez over here for why is it that later the Yidin will be taken out of Mitzrayim, in other words, there will be a ghost, but why is it that eventually the Yidin will come out of Mitzrayim? Is because right from the beginning, Haboyim Mitzrayim, as they came into Mitzrayim, they kept their Jewish names all the way till they left Mitzrayim. But according to the first Medrash that we mentioned, that it's not only because of the Eilish Shmois B'nei Yisrael, eventually a Geula will come, 210 years later. But rather, the names over here are mentioned. Al Shem Geulas Yisrael, they're mentioned over here because of the Geula itself. It's as if saying we're hinting the Geula right here. In the words, Ve'elu Shmois B'nei Yisrael, how can we understand that the words, Ve'elu Shmois B'nei Yisrael, refers to the Geula, when simply it's actually referring to the descent in Golos. Another thing we need to understand is this Medrash that says, Al Shem Geulas Yisrael Nizkirukan, so even if we could somehow find an explanation how the time that they're coming into Mitzrayim is connected to the Geula of the Yidden, but the question still would be, why? Why would the Pasuk men- emphasize and mention over here the Geula if actually what we're mainly dealing with is the descent into Mitzrayim? Furthermore, when we say that the names of the Shvatim are mentioned over here, I'll shame Geulas Yisrael because of the Geula, we don't only mean the Geula out of Mitzrayim, but in fact, even the ultimate Geula through Mashiach. As the Medrash, when explaining the names of the Shvatim in connection to Geula, what does the Medrash say by Yosef? Yosef's connection to the Geula is because eventually the Eibishter will, from the word Yosef, Lahoisef, he will add once again, Take the Yidin out, me Malchus Arashah, from the evil governments, just like the Abishta took the Yidin out of Mitzrayim. As the Pasuk says, 
Shein is yodid, and that day the Abishta will once again stretch out his hand, take the Yidin out of Golos. In other words, that what we're mainly dealing with is the Geula out of the current Golos, the Geula with Mashiach. Not only the Geula out of Mitzrayim. If that's the case, the question becomes even stronger. Not only does the Medrash seem to be connecting the descent into Golos, the words Haboy Mitzrayim, connecting it to the Geula of Mitzrayim, which is already a question as we had before, but furthermore, we seem to be connect, connecting the descent into Mitzrayim directly with the coming Geula with Mashiach, which, is, which comes a long time after going into Mitzrayim and a long time after the Geula out of Mitzrayim. And therefore, how can we understand the connection between the Yidin going into Mitzrayim and the Geula L'Asid Lavoy? Or to put it in a little bit of other words, what is the connection between the Yidin coming into Mitzrayim, that is Yaakov and his children, living 17 years in peace in Mitzrayim, then the time when the Egyptians and Paroi seem to forget about Yaakov and Yosef and so on, and all the uh, magicians of Egypt and the wise men of Egypt and Paroi coming along and plotting and planning against the Bnei Yisrael, and finally a Golos in Mitzrayim. How is all of that connected to the Geulah HaAsidah In addition to this, we need to understand, as the Rebbe always points out, that Torah is Milosh and Hayro. We need to take a lesson from everything in Torah. What would be the lesson right now, thousands of years, after the Yidin had come into, go, gone into Mitzrayim, and after gone out of Mitzrayim, how does all of this relate to us now? Says the Rebbe in Sif Beis, we can explain it in the following way. The truth of the matter is the whole idea of the Yidin going into Mitzrayim is really about Geula, the Geula of the Yidin. The fact that there seems to be a Yerida, the fact that there seems to be a Golos and a descent, that is only Bechitsonius, that is only external. But the Pnimius, what's really going on, is that the descent itself is not only in order to have a Geula, it's not only on condition to have a Geula, but furthermore, the descent itself is really part and parcel of the Geula of the ascent itself. And not only the ascent out of Mitzrayim, but ultimately the ascent of the Geula of Mitzvah Vashleim. And that's what the Medrash means by saying, the Eilish Shmois B'nai Yisrael Haboyim Mitzrayim, these are the names of the Yidin going down into Mitzrayim, that they are so called and mentioned over here because of the Geula. Yes, because of the Geula of Asid Allah as well. And since all of the inyanim of Haboyim Mitzrayim, of coming into Mitzrayim, and the Geula out of Mitzrayim, continue after the time of Mitzrayim as well, even nowadays, as the Chazal tell us, that all Malchios, that is all the governments and all of the Goliaths that we are in, are called on the name of Mitzrayim, are all related to Mitzrayim, we also know that we need to mention Yetzias Mitzrayim every single day. And in every single generation and every single day, a person is obligated to see himself as if he himself has gone out of Mitzrayim today. From all of this, we learn out that the truth of the matter is that even in the Golos that we are in right now, we have to bring in the Geulas Yisrael, the Geulo HaMitiz Vashlema. That means that just like right when the Yidin went into Mitzrayim, in essence, there's already the Geula in a similar way in the Golos that we're in right now. We too have to draw in and bring in the state of Geula, even in the time that we are in right now, as the Rebbe will explain later in the Sifa. In order to explain this, the Rebbe says in Sif Gimel, we're going to have a look at the very last Mishnah in the first Perik of Masech the Brochus. And this Mishnah we also say in the Haggadah. Amar Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah, Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah said, I am like 70 years old. We're soon going to see what that means. And up until now, I was not Zoich, I did not merit that people should agree with me that, the, that, the men, that there's a mitzvah to mention Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim at night as well, besides the mitzvah of mentioning it during the day. Until Ben Zoyma came along, and Ben Zoyma said, we have a posik Laman Tiskuris Yim Seis Chome Eretz Mitzrayim Koil Yumechayecha. You should remember the day that you came out of Mitzrayim Koil Yumechayecha. All the days of your life. 
So if it would have only said you may chayecha the days of your life, that would have meant that you only have to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the day. The fact that there is this extra word, koil you may chayecha, all the days of your life, says Ben Zoyma, that comes to include that you also have to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the night as well. That's actually, we have the mitzvah of mentioning in Vayoymer, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim both in the morning and at night. The Chachamim come along and say, and they learned the as follows. If it would have only said, you have to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the days of your life, that would have only included this world, that means nowadays. From the fact that it says, the extra word that teaches all the days of your life, this comes to include Lahavi this comes to include that also when Mashiach is going to come, we are also going to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Rashi comes along and explains, what does it mean that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah said, I am like 70 years old? So Rashi says, I was looking old, but he was not literally old. Rather, he looked old and he became old, it was the day that they removed Rabun Gamliel from being the Nasi, from being the leader of the Eden. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah was appointed Nasi, as is explained later in Masech the Brachas and Perit Tfilos HaShachar. And it was at that time that Ben Zoyma also said this drash that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah was just referring to. So the Rebbe asks, we need to understand, first of all, the connection of this whole saying about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and that will be mentioned when Mashiach comes, and so on and so forth, how it all has to do with Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah. Secondly, how it's all to do with the fact that Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah became the Nasi. It makes sense, the Rebbe says, since Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah was involved in this particular halacha in Torah at the time that he became Nasi, so somehow it must be that this is somehow connected to his whole avoida as being a Nasi of Yidin. The Rebbe says this is similar to the idea that we know that when we're learning Torah, we usually have to learn in Yonim of Torah, in matters, Shazman Grama, things that are relevant to the time, like for example around the Yom Tov, you learn the Alachas of Yom Tov. In a similar way, the Rebbe says this applies to each and every Yid, that a person should be learning Torah and the things that are particularly, particularly relevant to him at that time. So from Allah Zerb and Azariah is learning these halachis and teaching these halachis in connection with him becoming Nasi. It probably has something to do with the fact that he became the Nasi. And also the Rebbe says we want to understand the connection to the statement of Rabbi Allah and Azariah of being like 70 years old. So to explain this, the Rebbe says in Seif Dalet, this mission actually expresses the very tremendous Indian of Yetzias Mitzrayim. That is, that even after the Yidin went out of Mitzrayim, there is still an obligation to continuously remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, all the days of one's life, whether it's during the day or at night, as Ben Zoyma says, or taking it a step further according to the Chachamim, both in this world and during these times, and even in the times of Mashiach. The reason for this is, because remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is considered a Yesoid Godel, a very, very major foundation and a pillar in our Torah and in our Amunah. Because Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim began and opened the whole idea of Geula, that the Yidin went out from the Gedda, from being able to be slaves, and now they became Bnei Choyrin, free men, Be'etzim, in essence. Yidin are avod, avod ayhein. Yidin are now the servants of the Abishter and can never again be avodim, lavodim servants to anybody else. And this is something that continues forever. In avoidus adam, this means, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim represents the idea of the nefesh aliki is going out of its boundaries, out of the limitations, and out of the imprisonment of the physical body, of this physical world generally to connect oneself and to unite with the Eibishter through Torah and Mitzvahs. And since this is something so major and so general in all aspects of Torah and Yiddishkeit, therefore one needs to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim kol yimei chayecha, and in every single generation and day one needs to see himself as if he personally went out today out of Mitzrayim. More specifically, the Rebbe explains, there are three stages of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The first one is remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the day. 
What does during the day represent? When the light of Hashem is shining, as in the Pasuk, Vayikra Elikim, Lo'er Yoim. Yoim represents, day represents light. In other words, a time when the light of Hashem is shining, when things are good and well. So then definitely once the, one needs to see himself as if he just went out of Mitzrayim. This is the avoid of you to just constantly go out of his limitations and boundaries. Then there's another Chidush. Stage number two is that one needs to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. I remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim also during the night as Ben Zoyma teaches from the Pasuk Laman Tizkur, that the word Kol Yimei comes to include also the nights. This comes to teach that even when it's a time of darkness, a time of night, when the light of Hashem is not shining, it's a situation of Golos. Nevertheless, there needs to be, and there can be, an union of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim getting out of the Golos, removing oneself from that state of Golos. Then comes along the third Chidush, and the third stage, the Chachamim come along and say that Koyel Yimei includes not only during this time, the time of Golos, but even in the time of Yemois HaMashiach, there's also the idea of Maskirin Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And what does this mean? What's the chidush over here? What's the point that Chachamim are saying? So the Rebbe says, this is twofold. So number one, there's a chidush in the actual din of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. That the obligation of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Koyl Yimei Chayecha, which refers to, Yimei Chayecha refers to Oilom Hazeh and Zman Hazeh, but there's also including Yimois HaMashiach, and in fact, that itself is included in remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Koyl Yimei Chayecha, in this world. And before Yimei Mashiach, that includes also the time of Yimei Mashiach, part of the obligation of Zman Hazeh also includes Yimei Mashiach. A greater Chiddush, even number two, that even though in Yimei Mashiach, we're going to be in a state of Geula. L'choyre, it's not Shaykh so much, there's no need so much for this whole idea of remembering the Geula. And nevertheless, then too, we're going to mention and remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Furthermore, even though the Geula of Mitzvah Vashlema will be com- completely incomparable to the Geula of Mitzrayim, because it's going to be a Geula after which there is no goals, there will be no Ruach HaTumah left in the world. It will be a complete Geula going out out of all limitations and boundaries, whereas the Geula in Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was a Geula after which there was a goals. It was not a Geula Shleimo. The evil and the Ra and the Klippa inside the Eden was still there full force. And that's why they had to actually run away from Mitzrayim, as the Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya. Nevertheless, again, even though the Geula of Mitzrayim is an incomplete Geula, and the Geula of La'asid Lavi is a complete Geula, we're still going to keep on mentioning Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, even during the times of Yemoy Mashiach. The fact that we're going to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that itself is a proof that it's obviously of some benefit because of the special Maile and Chiddush that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is going to achieve even then, as will be explained later in the Sikha. Says the Rebbe in Sif, hey, we can explain it in the following way. In the Geul of Mitzrayim, what started off then was the whole idea of Geul. In other words, it was like opening the channel, opening the pipe for all Geulois, also from the following Geulois, including also the future Geul. Furthermore, not only was it a beginning for the all future Gulois, but really, if the Yidn would have been Zoycha, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim itself would have been a Gula Shleim, a complete Gula, after which there is no Golos. In a way, as the Yidn said in Az Yashir, that Hashem Yimloich La'oilam Void. And because Yidn would have then gone into Eretz Yisrael with a complete Gula, it is only because some other side things got mixed in, some negative things, that's why it didn't happen then, but poil mamash. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, we could say that the truth of the matter is that the real union of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is Yemoy Samashiach, the Geulo Hamitiz Vashleimo. And the real Pnimi is the Kenyan of Yemoy Samashiach is Geulas Mitzrayim. In other words, really, they should have been one and the same thing. It is only that practically, because of some side issues that got involved, in the meantime, there is some sort of interruption between these two times until the Geula will come practically down to earth. But even during the time in between Geula Mitzrayim and the Geula Shleimah, 
That means the time that we call Kol Yimei Chayecha. During our life in this world, during this time, we constantly still need to remember the day of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And as it says in Chassidus, that really all of the days from the Geula Rishonah, from the time that Yidin went out of Mitzrayim, until the Geula Asidah B'Mehed of Yemenu Amen, is really Yemenu Seis Chameyaretz Mitzrayim, meaning to say they are like the many days of going out of Mitzrayim, each one being another step and another stage of further going out of Mitzrayim. And since Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Pnimius is really the same idea as Yemaisa Mashiach, it's really one and the same. Therefore, remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Koyl Yimei Chayecha, all of a person's life, includes also the idea of Yemaisa Mashiach, Lahavi Yemaisa Mashiach, because really they're one and the same thing, and remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim includes also the idea of Yemaisa Mashiach. Based on this, as the Rebbe, we can now understand why we mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Yemaisa Mashiach. Even though that then Yidin are going to be in a state of Gula. And not only any Gula, but a Gula that's incomparable completely to Gula of Mitzrayim. Says the Rebbe, because number one, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is the beginning of Yemai Samashiach. Furthermore, it's the Pnimius of Yemai Samashiach. As we said before, really they're one and the same. And number two, is that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, is really poyol chidush, really bring something also to Yemoy Samashiach. How is that? Because Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, as the Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya, this was the avoid of Iskaf Yisitrachro. That means since the Yidin still had the Yitzhahara full force, so therefore the main avoid of them was fighting the evil, overcoming, suppressing the bad. And that was the avoid of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim as it was practically then because they were not Zoycha yet to the Gula Shleima. And therefore there is a certain Maila that always remains with Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, this special avoid called the Skafia. Nevertheless, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim lost in love is only going to be secondary because the main thing, of course, is going to be the fact that we are out of Golos and not sub and subjugated to the nations anymore and so on because the main Gili then will be the Geula Shleima, meaning a Gili that goes higher than all sorts of limitations and boundaries. Nevertheless, we still mention, at least in a secondary way, the idea of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim as well, because the whole Maila of L'Asid Lovi, that we are going to have a Geula Shleima higher than all sorts of limitations, in a way that all the Tumo will be removed from the world, which is really the idea of Ishapcha, that everything will be transformed. But that itself is not going to be sort of removed from this world, but that itself is going to come inside, permeate all of the limitations and all of the inyanim of this world itself, which is the idea of koil yimei chayecha, which is similar to the idea we said before, the idea of the iskafia, which happened in Geulas Mitzrayim. In other words, if, the Rebbe says, if we would not mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim when Mashiach comes, it would seem like that Gula is just something removed, completely removed from everything of this world, from Koyl Yimei Chayecha. When we mention the idea of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim as well, that means we're still acknowledging that this of Gula, the way it's when Mashiach comes, still needs to permeate and come inside all of the Inyanim of this world as, as well, a world that would need a Skafi on its own. Says the Rebbe in Sivov, now we can understand what the Chachamim are coming to add to what Ben Zoimo said. Ben Zoimo said that is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim both during the day and, as night, and during the night as well. We said the night represents the Indian of Golos. Come along the Chachamim and say, Kol Yimei Chayech, Lo Havili Moisa Mashiach. That means to say that Kol Yimei Chayech, all the days of your life in this world, and that includes, again, during the day and during the night, also the time of Golos. So during all the days of one's life, one has, in addition to the level of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, which is a Gula that's not perfect, as we said before. But Yid also has the Darga of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the way it's going to be in its ultimate way, in Yemois HaMashiach, the Gula Shlei Moshe Eina Golos. In other words, what the Rebbe is saying over here is 
that a Yid, even nowadays, even during the time of Golos, is already connecting to the time of Yemoy Samashiach as well. And the Rebbe explains this. The Rebbe says, we can understand, looking at the words, Lohavi Limoy Samashiach. What does it mean, Lohavi Limoy Samashiach? Simply, the Chachamim are saying that the word, Koyli Mechayach, is coming to include the, the time of Mashiach. But the usual expression would have been something like, Lerabos. But here it says, Lohavi Limoy Samashiach, which literally could be translated to bring to the days of Mashiach. So the Rebbe says, that the avoid of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Koil Yemei Chayecho, the avoid of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim all the days of your life, but Oil Mazen, this world, that itself, Lohavi Limoisa Mashiach, the Rebbe translates, brings in the days of Mashiach into our world right now. In other words, we bring in Yemoisa Mashiach into our current state. And furthermore, it actually brings Bapoil into Yemei Chayecha, also the Shleimus of the way it's going to be when Mashiach comes, and Yemei Samashiach, all the periods of Mashiach, in the Geulah HaMittis Vashleimah. So Lahavi Yemei Samashiach means, first of all, to bring in Yemei Samashiach into our time and place right now, as well as, of course, bringing to Yemei Samashiach in the simple sense of the word. From this we understand that the words of the Chachamim, when they say the Havili Moisa Mashiach, are not only coming to tell us about an obligation that we are going to have, an Allah that we are going to have when Mashiach comes, but it actually makes a difference in Afkamina also to the avoid of the Yid right now, even before Mashiach comes, Bapoil, because Yid knows that by mentioning Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim right now, it is connected to the whole idea of Yumoisa Mashiach. Again, bringing in the times of Mashiach right now and bringing to the times of Mashiach. Says the Rebbe, based on all of this, we can now understand the connection to Rabbi Lozor ben Azario, and it was specifically during the time that he became the Nasi. And the Rebbe explains in Seif Zion, the whole Chiddush of a Nasi, of a leader of Yidin, the leader of the Yidin, the word Nasi, the Rebbe says, is also Moloshan is Nasus, that he's lifted up and exalted. But the whole idea of the Avoid of the Nasi is to connect and to unite Koyal Yimei the life of a Yid, the way it is right now, his Gashmi is the Kalaif, and especially during the time of Golos, the Nasi helps the Yid connect his life right now with the Gula, with going out of all limitations generally, and specifically with Yemoy Samashiach, the Gula Amitiz Vashleim, after which there is no Golos. Davka the Nasi, it is specifically the Nasi that has the Koyach to combine and to unite Golos with the Gula. More specifically, to connect Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Yemoy Samashiach. As they are with the Golos, the way it practically ended up playing out, is there's a Golos in between. So he connects the time from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim all the way to Yemoy Samashiach. As he says, Tizkor is in Tezchom Eretz Mitzrayim, Koyl Yemei Chayecha, Lohavi Yemoy Samashiach. That means that in the life of the Yid, Koyl Yemei Chayecha, during the life that he's living right now, as a neshama in a goof in this physical world, in this gashmi is the materialistic world, in this managalos, he's able to elevate himself and to go out of all of his limitations and boundaries, and furthermore, to be able to stand in a state of Yemoy HaMashiach. And therefore, it was specifically the time that Abel Lazim and Azariah became Nasi, that he's involved in this avoid of maskirin Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, of mentioning Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, also Baleilois, and not only Baleilois, which represents the Golos, but also Lohavi Limoy Samashiach, as we explained the idea of connecting Yemoy Samashiach with the time that we are in right now. Says the Rebbe in Sif Ches, we can now understand how this is also connected with Rebbe Lozab and Azari's introduction that he says, Harei Anikiv and Shivim Shana, that I am like 70 years old. The Gemara relates that Rebbe Lozab and Azari, when he said, I am like 70 years old, and not actually 70 years old, is because he was only, in fact, 18 years old at the time. A miracle had happened, and 18 rows of white hair suddenly appeared in his beard, and that showed everyone that Abel Oza ben Azariah is deserving and fitting to be the Nasi, because he has already the white hair, like an elderly person, and it is appropriate for a darshan, for the leader, to be a zakin, to be elderly. What do we see from here? That the Shleimus of Nasius, that to be the Nasi in the proper way, 
is somehow related with being elderly and specifically 70 years old. And in fact, as the Gemara relates, that until he had this white hair appearing like a 70-year-old man, so even though he had so many great qualities, he was a chacham, a wise man, and a rich man, and a 10th generation to Ezra, that means he had good yichus. Nevertheless, he was not zoicha that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim should be mentioned at night, until finally Ben Zoyma came along, as we explained before, and that was on the day that Abel Ben Azariah became Nasi. So what is the significance of all of this? What is the idea that he was Dafka like 70 years old? So the Rebbe explains that 70 generally shows on a certain shleimus, on a certain perfection, on a wholesomeness within the life of the person. As the Pasuk says, Yimeshim Oiseinu Bohem Shivim Shana. A lifespan of 70 years. The shleimus, of course, by the fact of 70 years, what's the significance of 70 years? is because this represents that the Yid was mevarad, the Yid was elevating and refining all of his seven midois, each one of the midois as they are in its perfect state. As Chassidus explains, each one of the midois includes all of the ten koiches, the ten faculties, so that's seven times ten, which is seventy. More specifically, a Yid is given seventy years in order to be able to refine the seven midois as they come down here in his nefesh abahamis. Pasuk says, Yimeishnei say, Nu bohem, Shivim Shana. The Rebbe says that the word bohem is also from the word behemoth. That means he's coming to deal with the, the midois of the Nefesh Abahamis. And of Klippa generally, or even more generally, 70 also corresponds to the 70 Umay Sarelam, the nations of the world. A Yid is coming to deal with elevating all of with these negative things. And through this Avoida, he reaches a certain Shleimus of 70. 70. In the olive base is the letter Ayin. And the Rebbe says, what is the Ayin? The Ayin of Kedusha Ayin also means an eye. So that means he comes to a level to be able to see godliness. And the ultimate of seeing godliness, of course, when Mashiach comes, La'asid Lavoy. So that's generally an explanation of what it means, the Avoid of 70 years. So, so too, the Rebbe says, regarding Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah the Nasi, saying that he's like 70 years old, in order for him to be the Nasi, he had to reach the Shlemus of being like 70 years old. That means refining all the matters of the world that are divided into 70, like the 70 nations we just mentioned. And that gives him the Koyach. That he should be able to have Zochisi, our Zoycha, that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim should be mentioned at night, meaning to say that you could bring the idea of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the idea of Geula, getting out of all the limitations and boundaries, even in a situation of Lila, even in a situation of night, in addition, of course, to the avoid of every single day, and ultimately also the idea that meaning to even reach similar to the way it's going to be when the Geula Hashlema comes, when we'll finally have the complete elevation of all the 70 nations, and have the revelation of the 70, which we said again is the ayin, ayin is 70, the eye, the seeing of godliness, as the Pasek says, they'll be able to see godliness. Hashem is going to be found in every single part of the world in a revealed way. As the Pasek says, v'niglok v'yid Hashem, Hashem diber, that Hashem is going to be revealed and everyone will see godliness. And the Rebbe says, this idea, of Elikuz being Begilui. And this is what's going to be the Gilui loss in Lovely. And this is where Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria was already bringing in right now. The Rebbe says we could connect this also to the name Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria. So the Rebbe looks at both names. First of all, the name Elazar is the same letters and has the letters of Kael, Azer, which means, of course, Hashem helps. And also the word Azaria also has a similar, similar words. Azer. Yudke, again the help of Hashem. Elazar ben Azaria is a combination of both things together. And in the brackets, the Rebbe says that this could be viewed in two ways. Either you say that the main thing is Azaria, and Elazar ben Azaria means Elazar is receiving from the level of Azaria, or looking at it the other way, the main thing is Elazar, and he is ben Azaria. In other words, as the Rebbe says, Yofa koyach haben mi koyach av. There's a concept that the son sometimes is ta- taking the inyanim of the father even to a greater level. Or, 
The Rebbe gives another example. So the word Ben Choyrin doesn't mean the son of a free man. Ben Choyrin means a free person. In other words, his whole Metzius is in a state of freedom. In a similar way, you could say over here, El Lazar Ben Azaria means he's a Lazar that's in a state of Azaria. But either way, what is the idea? What does either El or Azaria and both together mean? That means Rebbe Lazar Ben Azaria, Azar, we said in both words, means he's getting a special assistance from Hashem. And the way Hashem is completely, completely higher than the world. Both in the name El Lazar, where you have the name Kale, and in the name Azaria, where you have the name Yudke, these are both names that represent a level of godliness that is higher than Ishtalshalus, especially when we have both together, together El Lazar Ben Azaria. So basically, Rebbe Lazar Ben Azaria is receiving such assistance from the Abishter because he is the Nasi. So he is getting this assistance to, to be the Nasi and to give the Koyach to the Yidden to do their Avoidah of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, both during the day and at night, and during Yemoy Mashiach, and as we said before, Lahavi Yemoy Mashiach, both bringing in the time of Mashiach now and to bring to the ultimate goal. Says the Rebbe in Sif Tess, we can add that this Chiddush of Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah as a Nasi is also hinted in the story that the Gemara relates regarding to the time when Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah became Nasi. So when Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah became Nasi, they removed the guard of the Beis Medrash, and from now on permission was given to all Talmidim to enter whoever wanted to come learn. Because in the times of Rabbi Gamliel, he had made an announcement that any Talmud that ain't kibari, meaning to say that his inside does not match his outside, should not come into the base medrash. You need to be sincere, inside and outside the same. On the day Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah became Nasi, many more benches were added to base medrash, many more Talmidim came. And the Rebbe explains, in the time of Rabbi Gamliel, so his anhaga was similar to the way it's going to be when Mashiach comes, there won't be any problems, there won't be any tumor, there won't be any klipa. And therefore, what was his attitude? A Talmud that's not 100% doesn't belong in the base Medrash because based on the level of Kedusha of L'Asid Lavoy, there is no room for anything that's the opposite, anything that's not perfect. The Rebbe says this is similar to Shammai. In other places, it's explained that the word Shammai comes from the words Hashom or Choysav, someone that constantly keeps on evaluating and weighing his ways and very, very particular. And this is what we say that Lo Asid Lavoy, that is going to be like Beis Shammai, so this is being very, very strict. Only 100% Kedusha belongs. Whereas Rabbi Lozer ben Azariah's Avoido was an Avoido that's fitting to this world and to this time. His whole Avoido was that even in a world where there is limitations and, cha- and, and boundaries, challenges, concealments, problems of this world, the darkness of this world, he comes with the attitude that you, it, you could come along and cause a Yetzias Mitzrayim. So even in a world where there is Talmidim, which are maybe not perfect, you could bring them in and elevate them as well. And therefore on that day, the Shoimer, the guard, was removed from the door and all Talmidim got permission to enter. This is the whole idea of the Nasi, to add more and more Talmidim by Israel, that they too should be able to get involved. So one may have thought that since Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah is allowing also these sorts of Talmidim to come inside, maybe the only amount that you can achieve is not a perfect gul, or maybe it's only a skafia, maybe it's only similar to Yetzirah Mitzrayim, a time when there is Nefesh Bahamas left, there is a Yetzirah left, there is some problems left, that's like kind of Yetzirah Mitzrayim, when there's, there is still some sort of negativity. Says the Mishnah further, what did the Chachamim say? That not only are the knights included, but meaning to say that also in a state of Galus, even in a state where you have Talmidim that ain't toichik abari, that are not perfect and 100% sincere, even there we can also draw in the Geula Shleima, the perfect Geula. The Rebbe says this is hinted also in the continuation of the Gemara. Gemara says that even Rabbi Gamaliel himself did not stop himself from entering the base Medrash even for one moment or even for one little period, meaning to say that Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah achieved and affected that even Rabbi Gamaliel, whose Darga and Avoid is more like Yemoy Mashiach, as we said before, 
Nevertheless, he too became part of this. Now he too agreed. And he's helping along in the avoid of Rabbi Lozab and Azariah to allow the Talmudim to come into the base Medrash. Says the Rebbe in Sifyut, we can now also explain the fact that this Mishnah that we've been discussing is in the end of the first Patek of Masech the Brochus. The beginning of the first Patek starts off with literally meaning from when do we start reading Shema at night. But what this means is we're talking about the effect of Kriya Shema, which is Kabolas Oil Malchus Shamayim, and Me'emosai, the Rebbe says, besides meaning from when, could also be translated from the word of Emo, which means fear and awe. So we have Kriya Shema, which is read with Kabolas Oil, with awe and fear, and when do we read it? Even Ba'arvin, even in the evening, even in the time of the darkness of the Golos. And this is exactly the same point at the end of the Peirik, as we know the rule, no, it's Soifan, but in the beginning and the end are very strongly connected, that we mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim at night in Kriya Shema. And as the Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya, that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Kriya Shema is really all one and the same idea. And that's exactly why we say Vayoymer, the parasha of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during Kriya Shema, even though technically it's a separate mitzvah really, the idea of mentioning Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, it's not part of Kriya Shema. But really, you'd see as Mitzrayim and Kriya Shema is one and the same. Says the Rebbe, based on the rule of Nod, Soifan, Betchilosan, 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 at the beginning and the end are all connected. So besides for the beginning and the end of the Perik that the Rebbe just explains, which we just said, is the connection of Kriya Shema and you'd see as Mitzrayim in the beginning of the end of the Perik, the Rebbe says we can also connect it to the end of the whole Shas. And the Rebbe says both in the Gemara, which finishes off with a famous statement of someone who learns halachis every day is guaranteed that he's a ben oilam aboy as it says halichos oilam loy and we don't read it as halichos rather halachis that whoever has halachis every single day is guaranteed a portion in oilam abo. what is the idea of halichos oilam loy halichos oilam means the ways of the world he's drawing down into the world he's drawing down the halachis of Torah and what does he get? Oilum Habo. And Oilum Habo, we know, doesn't only mean Ganeiden, but Oilum Habo includes also the Pshat of Oilum Atriya, the time of Tri Samesim, the time of Lo'asid Lovi. That is the end of the of Shas in the Gemara. In Mishnayis we have, the last Mishnah finishes off with the words, Lemotsa Kodish Baruch, Timachzik, Brochli Yisrael. The Abishta didn't find a better Kali that contains Brocha for the Yidden. Besides for shalom, for peace, as the Pasuk says, Hashem oiz la'amo yitain, Hashem yivarech es amoy v'ashalom. In fact, the Gemara in Brachos also finishes off with the same Pasuk. What is the Pshat? That the Eibishter gives Yidin strength. The Eibishter gives Yidin the assistance, similar to what we said before, Elozor ben Azariah. And we said that both Elozor and Azariah are this idea of Ezer. So the Eibishter gives the Yidin the strength and the help. And what's the strength? In oiz elo Torah. And Hashem Yevorich is Amoy Vashaloim. When the Abishta gives the Yidden the ultimate peace, which is, of course, by the Gu'ulo Amit is Vashleimo, as explained in other places on the Pasuk of Padu Vishalim Nafshi. Now the Rebbe comes back to the beginning of the Sicha of what the Medrish says on the words of Eilish Mois B'nei Yisrael Aboy Mitzrayimo, that the Yidden are called over here by their names based on the Gu'ulo. Which the Rebbe asked that seemingly was speaking about the Yerida, and how does it make sense that we're mentioning the Bnei Yisrael based on the Gula? So the Rebbe explains and see if you doubt. We explained that Maskirin Yitzias Mitzrayim Baleilois, we mention Yitzias Mitzrayim at night. Mentioning Yitzias Mitzrayim at night, which night we said is Golos, indicates that really, even while we are, in Mitzrayim, even while we are descending in Golos, really it's about Gula, really it's about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and really it's about Lahavili Moisa Mashiach, the ultimate Gula, which is also the ultimate of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, as we were explaining before. And therefore, this is the meaning of the Medrash Hashem Gulas Yisrael Nizkiru Khan, that they're mentioned over here because of the Gula. Because the whole idea of Haboy Mitzrayim, the whole idea of Yidin going into Mitzrayim, into the limitations, into the boundaries, is all about to reveal 
how not only the Golas is for the sake of Gula, but really that this itself is all part of the Gula, and the Shvatim are being mentioned right over here, so they are so-called because of the Gula. And the Rebbe says, a little point to add, is that we know that when the Yidin came down to Mitzrayim, the Pasuk right away in the beginning also emphasizes that there were Shivim Nefesh, which is similar to what we spoke before, the idea of 70. The Rebbe explains that here is hinted as well, that the Avoido, as Yidin are coming into Mitzrayim, into the Golas among 70 nations, which correspond to the 70 Nefesh of the Yidin. So the whole idea of why the Yidin are coming into the Golos is all really to reveal the Geulas Yisrael. And the Koyach of this comes from the 70 souls that came, the descendants of Yaakov. Similar to Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, which was 70 years old, which he is the one giving the Koyach to mention Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim during the night of Golos. And furthermore, Lahavi Limay Samashiach, as we said before, to reach the ultimate level of 70. Or as the Rebbe says over here, in Shema we also have the big Ayin, which is also 70, of Kriya Shema, in which we mention also Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Says the Rebbe, from all of this, we also have the lesson for Bnei Yisrael from the Medrash, that we need to know, that even while we are in Golos, so in addition to the fact that the Yidin remains strong, in the most perfect way, as is obvious, and as is also hinted in the end of Parshas Vayechi, where it says, Vayachem to Oisoi, Vayisem Ba'orim B'Mitzrayim, speaking about the fact that they embalmed Yosef in a way that the body should remain intact. So in addition to the fact that the Yidin remain intact and complete, says the Pasuk, Ve'ele Shmois B'nei Yisrael Ha'boyim Mitzrayim. And that is adding even more that they are mentioned here because of the Geula. That means to say that in addition to the fact that the Yidin remain complete, as Neshamois Big Gufim, Neshamois in physical bodies with physical life, and spiritual life altogether as a healthy neshama and a healthy guf in the most perfect way. But in addition to all of that, not only are they standing in a state of leading and bringing to the gula, but they are standing already in a state of gula. Or as we said before, and as will still be explained a little bit more soon. Says the Rebbe in Seifud Base. Based on this, we can also understand the special connection to, of Parsha Shmois to Chav Teves, which is the Yom Ilula, the yard site of the Rambam, which always falls out near Parsha Shmois, and the year that the Rebbe is saying the Sicha, so Chav Teves was actually Erev Shabbos of Parsha Shmois, especially based on what's known, that what we eat on Shabbos is all based on the effort that we have put in on Erev Shabbos, as the Chazal say, Misha Torah Erev Shabbos, someone that put in the effort on Erev Shabbos has what to eat on Shabbos, so it's understood that there's a connection between the Yom Ilulu of the Rambam to the parsha of Torah of the Shabbos, parsha Shmois. And furthermore, as we said, the eating or what we have on Shabbos comes from the Erev Shabbos, meaning what we have on Shabbos comes from the yard site of the Rambam and Erev Shabbos. So to explain this, the Rebbe says that by the Rambam we saw clearly this idea that as he was in Mitzrayim, in the literal sense, a boy in Mitzrayim, he was in a state of Golos and in Mitzrayim, he affected to the extent that it was possible in that time, Geulas Yisroel, in his current situation, both as far as a Ruchni is the Geula, compared to the Choshech HaGolas that was then, similar to the idea that we bring in a Yetzias Mitzrayim even in the time of Lelis, even in the time of night and dark, as well as giving the Koyach and the for the Geula Shleim HaKepshuto, Lohavi Limois HaMashiach, and as is hinted in the name Rambam itself, the name Rambam is a Rosh Tevis of a Pasuk that says, Revois Moifsai Be'eretz Mitzrayim, that the Amishta increases his wonders and miracles in the land of Mitzrayim. And the Rebbe explains what the Rambam did. As the Rambam was in Mitzrayim, literally, in, in Mitzrayim, that's where he authored his very, very great Sefer, Mishnah Torah, a Sefer of Halachis Halachis, a Sefer that collects all of Torah Shabalpa, which that brings about a Geula, a state of going out of Mitzrayim within the darkness of the Golas, as the Rambam writes in his introduction to his Sefer and why he's writing this Chibur, that is in order to negate the darkness, the concealments that has happened in the standing Torah, the Rambam explains that all of those explanations and the halachos and the response of previous generations became very, very difficult to understand, 
hardly anyone understands it. Needless to say, the Gemara itself is more complicated. And the Rambam says, therefore, I saw a need to make a sefer that's going to clarify and bring all the halachis in a very, very clear and concise way so that the Torah Shabal Peh should be clearly understood by everyone. And that's exactly what happened. That the Sefer of Rambam became a guide for Bnei Yisrael in all the generations. First of all, starting with the Eden in the time of the Rambam himself. But from there, his halachis and his rulings also spread to other times in the world, as it's known from the letters of the Rambam. Furthermore, it came to the Eden in generations of, in later generations, including, of course, the many Sfarim, beginning with the Shulchan Aruch, that are based on the Rambam. In other words, the Rambam brought about that even in a state of Leilis, even in a state of darkness and night, in Mitzrayim in the literal sense, and also Mitzrayim from the word of Meitzari Megvulim, limitations, yet there should be a Yetzias Mitzrayim to be able to lift oneself out, to have the Geulas Yisrael, actually similar to what Rabbeinu HaKadosh, the author of Mishnayis did, in order that Torah Shabal Pesha not be forgotten, and as is hinted in the beginning of Mishnayis itself, which Rabbeinu HaKadosh authored, which we said before, these two points, of Me'emus HaKadosh Neshma Ba'arvim, bringing the idea of Kriyashma into the evening, as well as the idea of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim in the evenings as well. Furthermore, in addition to Maskirin Yitzhiya Mitzrayim Ba'leilois, bringing Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, the idea of Geula, into the evening, which is as we explained, bringing in the understanding of Torah and lifting oneself out of the darkness and so on during the time of the Rambam, he also achieved as a preparation for Mashiach's coming as well, as it's known that the Sefer Rambam includes all the halachis of the Torah, also the halachis that are relevant to the time of the Beis HaMikdosh, as well as the halachis of Yemois HaMashiach in the very end of the Sefer, which all shows the Yidin, the Halachis, which are connected to Yemois HaMashiach, how we need to prepare for it, and what's going to be the say there, practically of the coming of the Geulah HaMitiz V'Ashleimah. The Rebbe says, Ullah Hoysif, that the Rambam actually also lived 70 years. Just to mention and point out, interesting Ha'or over here, where the Rebbe says that the Rambam lived close to 70 years, he lived 83 days, less than 70 years, and the Rebbe says that we could suggest, and we could say that through the 83 halachos, the Sefer Rambam is made up of 83 halachos, through those 83 halachos, they make up, so to speak, for those 83 days, so that in total the Rambam has the 70 years. So 70 years we explained before, as Yemeshin Yiseinu Bohem Shivim Shon, which as we explained, represents the Gilu in a complete way, of Arei Anikiv and Shivim Shona, similar to Rabbi Loza ben Azaria, to achieve the Yetzias Mitzrayim in all sorts of situations, whether during the day or at night, and Lahavi li Moisa Mashiach, as we explained before. Based on what it's known that in the Yom Hilula of Tzadik, all of his actions in Torah and his avoided that he did his whole life, and that day they all go up, Lamailo. And it then shines down and reveals itself in this world. And as Pahil Yeshua is Bekerevar, it's causes salvation and help down in this world. It's understood that on the day of Chav Teves, the Yom Lula of the Rambam, we have Begili, all of the actions in Torah and Avoida of the Rambam. First of all, in his Chibur, the Sefer of Mishnah Torah that he made in Mitzrayim, as well as the other matters of Avoida that he did during the 70 years of his life. And that all brings Yeshua's salvations and help down into this world, into Mitzrayim, into all the limitations of this physical world, in a way that he becomes the guide, and as he was known as the Moira HaNevuchim, the guide of the perplexed, of the Yidin and all generations afterwards. So based on all of this, the Rebbe says we can understand that the Chidush of what we have on this Shabbos, Parsha Shmois of this year, since it's coming based on the Avoid and the effort of Erev Shabbos, we have all of the Maisa and Torah and Avoida that the Rambam has prepared during his 70 years of his life. They are all coming down and bringing Yeshua's Bekat of Oritz on this side of Shabbos. And if that's the case, we can understand what it adds. And it helps us in the Avoida of this Shabbos to be poil, bring about the poil Mamish, the Geulas Yisroel, in the way Yidin are in their state of Aboy Mitzrayim and Gauls. Says the Rebbe in Sif Yud Gimel. The lesson that we have from all of this is understood simply 
especially in our generation and in our time. It was discussed many, many times already the words of Kvayt Kedush Asmari V'chami Admur Nesidereinu. That in addition to the fact that Kalu Kala Kitsan at all times are up already, the Yidden had done Shuva already and we completed everything, including polishing the buttons. All we need now is just that the Abishta should open the Yidden's eyes, that they should be able to see the Gula Amitiz Vashlema, that it's here already, and that we're sitting already in front of the Shulchan Aruch, the set table, with the Sa'uda, the Vyasan, the Shayr Habar, etc., etc. From this we understand that if at the time that the Eden had gone down to Mitzrayim thousands of years ago, when there was the Ve'ele Shmois B'nei Yisrael Aboy in Mitzrayim, at that time there was Begilu already, Ge'ulas Yisrael, right in that you already have the Gula. If at all times the Avoida of Eden was to draw and to bring down the Ge'ula even into the state of Golos, how much more so after we have so much Ma'asenu, Vavidasenu, so much of the Eden's activities during the time of Golas during all these generations, including the time of Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah in his time, and the Rambam in his time, and all the tzaddikim of Yidin in all generations, until the most recent generations, where we have the Avoid of Rabbi Yisainu Nesiyenu, which come from Beis David, from Shevet Yehuda, including the Avoid of Kvoit Kedusha Smoyri Vachami Admur, during the 70 years that the Friedrich Rebbe lived in his physical life in this world from Tafresh Mem until Tafshin Yud. If that's the case, how much more so in our generation and in our time, after we have completed all of this already, so now we definitely have the absolute guarantee in Torah that surely there will be simply meaning that we don't need any more any sort of interruption between the time of Kol Yimei between nowadays and Yimei HaMashiach, as was the case by the Bnei Yisrael in all generations before this generation, rather, Kol Yimei all the days of the life of every single Yid, the physical life as in Neshama Beguf, include simply also Yimei HaMashiach, that means we go straight into Yimei HaMashiach without any interruption, because the Geula comes immediately at this very moment, at this very time, even if it's a time of Lailo, Haboy Mitzrayim, even if it's a state of darkness. So that the last moment of Golis and the last point of Golis immediately become the first moment and the first point of the Geula. And from Yemei Chayecha in this time and in this place without any interruption, Chas showing at all, even if we're speaking about someone that's already older than 70 years old, etc., Every single yid goes in directly. Betachlis hashlemus. As we said, Ruven v'shimoy nachshon, Ruven and Shimon went into Gaul as they come out of Gaul. So we come directly into the continuation of Kol Yimei Chayecha, directly into Yimei Samashiach, and the eternal life that we will have then. Says the Rebbe in Sif Yudalv, Benegeil Apoil practically. The whole idea is, that the avoid of Bnei Yisrael now needs to be lohavi limoysa Mashiach, meaning to say you need to reveal right now immediately how we are already, even as we are haboy in Mitzrayim, in Golos, really we are already in a state of Geula, that is, by preparing ourselves and preparing other people to the state of Yemois HaMashiach, including especially in connection to the Yemilul of the Rambam, by strengthening ourselves and adding even more in the learning of Sefer Mishnah Torah of the Rambam, including by participating or strengthening ourselves, adding even more if we already participate in learning Rambam, uh, in participating with all the many hidden learning Rambam, either three prokim a day or one peirik a day or Sefer HaMitzvahs, and especially within the Sefer HaRambam itself, learning the halachas of Melech HaMashiach and the last two prokim of Hilchis Malachim, which is the very end of Sefer Mishnah Torah. And in addition to learning this, you should also take care to be mashpi on other Yidin around you, men, women, and children, in a way of Amidu Talmidim, Harbi setting up many Talmidim. And in a way that people see from you and they learn, and many other people follow your example, that by just taking the Achlotes regarding this, we should immediately get the reward of the fulfillment of what the Rambam himself says in the very end of the Sefer, that after we already have the Melech mi Beis David, the king from the household of David, learning Torah and being involved in mitzvahs like David Oviv. And getting all the Yidin to go in his ways, in its ways, and strengthening the ways of Torah, and he's fighting the wars of Hashem. 
So after we already have this Melech Mibes David, that's already Beches Kashu Moshiach. So there should already be, immediately, you should already be Moshiach Bevadai by being successful, building the base Hamikdash and gathering all the dispersed of the Yidden and fixing up the whole world, bringing the whole world to serve the Abishta together until, as the Rambam concludes, Molar it's Deus Hashem, that the world will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem, Kamayim Layam like the water that covers the sea.